yeah hello everyone i am sandeep bhat as gautam just told right i went to bhutan and reduced their gdp i mean gross happiness index and increased my gross happiness index before we begin i would like to introduce myself i have close to 8 plus years of experience in the industry i began my career at hewlett packard enterprise and then joined a startup which was eventually acquired by cisco i spent the next one and a half years at cisco working on uh, problems around cloud cost optimization then i joined walmart where i spent the next two and a half years as part of a team that was responsible for developing in house load balancers that could scale to huge amount of traffic post that i joined harness where i work currently as a staff software engineer and harness is a company that is that that, that operates in the devops space and i am part of a team that works on uh, cloud cost optimization my second time well beyond work, beyond work i love traveling as you also already know i'm i mean it's uh, pretty similar uh, like like all of you right all uh, everybody loves traveling but i try to maintain a jira epic to track progress in that right in the sense that i would want to cover 30 countries by the time i turn 50 and and to give an update on the on the status i am like 30% done well moving on before i work on that like maybe yeah, this this pic was taken when i was working on this epic basically moving on before i go go further in that right like let's discuss uh, scheduled job executions in go and how you don't to come up with a design for a system that can perform these these jobs at scale and and i would like to start by taking a step back and and take look at the very basics and then we'll try to come up with a design iteratively well any any system can come across uh, two kind of two kinds of task basically a simple one would be a synchronous task and these are those that are sort of sequential in nature and and blocking in the sense that uh, say an example like making an api call to fetch the latest cricket score right the the action is completed as and when you make make the request right it's like immediately you get the response back at the other end of the spectrum you have the asynchronous jobs like which which is where or all, all, all the queuing system comes into picture and these are those those that are not completed immediately uh, like in in terms of b2b say for example you are making a, a request to provision a cluster in, in in any of the cloud providers right the it might take your request immediately but it will go through multiple different stages before it's actually completed right this is this is a good example for that and coming back to the the scheduled jobs like i would like to categorize them into two ways into two types basically one are those that are uh, implemented usually using a cron notation based jobs basically these, these are periodic in nature and most popularly may, maybe like a five star cron notation is a good good example for that and then a sample uh, task for this would be like uh, generating a periodic report like weekly report it could be anything right and moving i mean the other kind of uh, scheduled jobs that i want to talk about is around uh, delayed jobs like this could be one time jobs but maybe you don't want to execute them immediately as and when they are enqueued and we have a good uh, use case for it in harness wherein we try to do something called auto stopping wherein we try to stop cloud resources that are inactive beyond a configured idle time and this way you save a lot of cost right and this this case you can use for traveling yeah now let's try try coming up with a, a design for a, for a system that can uh, perform these goals we will we'll start by taking a look at the very uh, primitive unit or the smallest unit in this case right we are we are discussing about jobs so when you when you say jobs what do you mean by a job a job can have various different parameters but let's let's start by defining some of them a job has a name so that you know what it's trying to do and it has a delay at which you want to run it right and then when it comes to executing a job you want to have you want to take some approach like let's take the approach of making a using a callback here and a callback can look something like this right you have a custom type for it and this is sort of extensible right and yeah uh, this this is a sample uh, uh, job callback that i'm just uh, giving uh, giving as a um, sample example basically in the sense that in this case we are taking an argument of the the time of creation of the job and we are trying to just print the 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 delay at which we executed it now let's try to do a uh, take a very primitive approach right so the moment you say delay the first thing that comes to mind would be time dot sleep right and and, and I mean you can you can do it something like this right but this is not really going to work in in production or anywhere you don't want to take this approach so now then before we try to see okay wh what can we do more on this like how do we improve right let's let's try to see what are the features that we want to cover again it can be endless a list of features but we will we will pick up uh, some of them like it should support uh, multiple jobs in any system uh, or job manager that you are trying to design should support multiple jobs it should support taking in jobs as and when they come up on ad hoc and then you should it should have more other uh, features around say retries maybe cancellation of jobs etc 
Now let's try defining a, a job manager like this, right? So the moment you say it should support multiple jobs, let's think of maybe a slice here, and, and a channel uh, that can uh, support taking in jobs that come ad hoc. And then, I mean, I mean, a simple method is around enqueuing a job. Like it, it can, we are, we are just seeing a stub here now. When you are enqueuing a job by passing in a job, and it should return an error, if any, right? Yeah, now we are, I mean, in this slide, you just saw an enhancement for the NQ job. Like as and when a job comes, we are just going to add it to a channel, channel for jobs. And as you know, a channel is blocking in nature. So if you are adding a job to the channel, you would want somebody to be able to process it or, or read it behind the scene, right? In this case, we, we have this start method, which would be initialized when the job manager is initialized and, and invoked, basically. And this would be a go routine that runs behind the scene, looking for jobs constantly and then performing the actual task. So if you want to enhance this, like it looks something like this, right? You have an infinite loop, and wherein you you sort the jobs based on the time at which they are supposed to be executed, and the one in the front is the one that that has to run first, basically. If if there are jobs in the list again, then what happens is like yeah, we would use the timer of Golang Golang's time package. You set the timer to the the delay that we want to, and we use the select construct wherein we are able to handle the timer as and when it triggers. So you can ex execute the job using the callback. Again, you can add more wrappers around, uh, around it for, for retries and other, other aspects. Again, I mean, if, you, if a new job were to come, you, you support it using the, I mean, again, the select const, uh, construct lets you add it uh, into the job channel, add job channel. And the, the process repeats. At this stage, you have something that, that can uh, may possibly work for a, for a software it's in its early stage of development or early uh, growth level. Right? And you can add, add more uh, bells and whistles to have uh, I mean, APIs around this and maybe you can have it uh, run separately as a microservice. But it still is missing uh, certain aspects, like I mean, you don't have the guarantees of a, of a queue, and then maybe I mean, scaling, etc., is, is a possible challenge in this case. So if you have to look, look go further, I mean, at the moment you talk about uh, uh, guarantees, uh, reliability, and stability, the very first thing that could come, come to your mind would be a queue, right? And what are the features of a robust uh, queuing mechanism or queuing system that you want to use? It should support message order. And it should support uh, retries, which, which we spoke about, and uh, separate priority for each of the different queues, etc. And then you, again, you want to support multiple queues for different kinds of jobs. And again, obviously, the, the, the queue has to be able to distribute the job across uh, multiple different consumers or workers. And factory is something that uh, that we have used uh, extensively at Harness uh, in one of our early stages of development. And uh, factory is an open source component, and it is it is a distributed. Uh, background job processing system that is backed by Redis. Basically, it uh, uses Redis for all the, all the storage of that. And it, it mean, we, we managed to implement uh, multiple millions of jobs using that, and it, it served us pretty well uh, for, for the duration where we used it. Yeah, and it has a cool web UI, and it supports the scheduled jobs as well. Right? Now, if you are to now use factory and enhance our NQ method, it can look something like this, wherein you can configure the, the time at which you want to run it. You can, it. It can be a scheduled job or something that runs immediately as well, right? You, it has a versatility for that. Yeah, so I mean, if you are to see, like factory uh, would, would, work, would work pretty well for a company that, that's in a decent level of maturity or, or the software that's like, for most of the software, I mean, we are yet to reach a huge amount of scale or complexity. But it has its own catch in the sense that I mean you, you might be able to scale it vertically, but I mean the the model that works for it would be more, more like a primary secondary model wherein you have a common shared Redis, right? So I mean that that will serve well till till a certain scale. And we are again yet to uh, implement the the cron job based uh, scheduled jobs, right? That that's still not supported. So we we still want to look at it. So let's let's uh, maybe we'll come back to this since it's missing HA completely. But we will we'll see how we are going to implement uh, cron jobs in, in the sense. So again, you have, you have multiple options here. One would be something like Decron, which is again uh, written completely using Go, and it has support for HA, and it's a separate microservice that can perform cron jobs for you. And the way it works is that it's a, what do you say, it, it supports the, the popular five-star cron notation, and, and you can configure it using multiple different ways. Like say, I mean, it, it could look something like this, right? You can configure the time zone schedules, and then you, have, you just have to make a API request to, to configure it, a basic post call. And it supports multiple different types, like say gRPC or, or, or what do you say, even bash commands, etc. And the and, and the moment the job has to run based on your cron, it will it will make a webhook call back to your service. So you can you can configure it that way to scale well. So at, at this point, we have something that that works really well for most of the scenarios or most of the systems or softwares. But 
let, let's say your company has grown huge now and you have more traffic coming in and you would want to uh, support different queuing mechanisms or maybe there's more complexity or in that thing right but when when it comes to that uh, you can look at something like rabbit mq this is this is not the only solution but this is one of them that we are we are uh, working on and um, if you have to look at how do you uh, I, mean, I mean just to give a context on rabbit mq right it has the concept of uh, topic exchanges and then uh, queues and it has multiple different queuing mechanism, but we will we'll take the simplest one around direct exchange, right? In this case, what would happen is, I mean, there would be a queue attached to a topic. So messages are published to a topic, a topic exchange is what the, the full abbreviation of it. So messages are published to topics, and then queues basically pick it up and distribute it among the different consumers. In this case, uh, you, can, you can use RabbitMQ to achieve the same uh, delayed jobs in two ways. One would be a plugin based approach. It has its own uh, drawbacks. So in, I mean, if you have to look at a better way to do that would be a delayed uh, dead letter approach. That's a, that's a good one. Wherein you basically uh, send a publish a message onto a particular topic, which has no uh, queues or consumers listening on. And when you publish, you, you define a TTL, which is our intended delay time. And also post the TTL expiration, the, the message is forwarded to another topic which has all the consumers working on. So we would, we would basically say, taking an example of say uh, 30 minutes or, or whatever is the delay time, you would publish a message onto topic A, which with TTL set to 30 minutes. And since it has no workers, it will expire post 30 minutes and immediately get pushed onto topic B, which has uh, exchange, I mean, queues and workers listening on them. As a result, the, the whole task is being, what do you say, implemented immediately. Yeah, so if you are to uh, collate the entire entire thing that we have, it would look something like this now, right? You have uh, API servers that are, that are behind a load balancer, which you can scale horizontally. And as and when they re uh, receive a request, you basically end up translating that into jobs, which are uh, enqueued into RabbitMQ or factory based on, based on your what is a choice or the maturity level. And eventually workers uh, can again scale horizontally and, and implement all, all of these jobs. And I mean, Dcron or, or Google Cloud Scheduler can handle the, the cron jobs wherein you configure them, the APIs would, our API server would end up configuring them. And as soon as the time comes, it would make a webhook call back to an exposed endpoint at our end, which repeats the process of enqueuing the job and, and you can complete that up. Yeah, so in, in short, uh, I would like to conclude by saying that each and every software goes through its own, uh, what do you say, maturity life cycle. And it has its own, what do you say, has its own uh, evolution story. And there is no one single silver bullet that fits all the needs. The, the tools and the design that you pick up are dependent on the, the maturity level of your software as well as the magnitude of the problem that you are trying to solve. And then just to quote, right, in software, the only constant is change apart from the constants in your code base, obviously. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>